Today, I share my TFSA dividend income for the month of June. Let's do this. My wife and I do our finances together, so I'll share our combined TFSA dividend income we receive through our three investment accounts with Scotia iTrade and Wellsimple. Before I jump into who paid us and how much, let's take a brief look at our portfolio's dividend calendar. You probably noticed January, April, July, and October are the heavy months, and February, May, August, and November are the light months. Just so I'm 100% transparent with everyone, I'll be sharing my dividend income based on when it lands in my account, not based on a payout date. In June, we receive dividends from the following companies. If you're interested to see our entire 165,306 TFSA portfolio, check out the video link in the description. I'll go through each holding according to the dividend weight, not payout size, in my portfolio starting with the smallest. I'll be adding up my totals along the way. But before we start, I just had to share this amazing hike my wife and I went on. This is the Lighthouse Park hike in West Vancouver. Just check out these views. It is an example of a remaining old growth forest in Metro Vancouver. The area is a rainforest, so it's very lush and green and humid. If you're ever in Vancouver and want a lovely free activity, I highly recommend it. Our smallest dividend received was $13.25 from Canadian National Railway. CNR provides 1.6% of our total dividend income. This should be much larger, however, I haven't really purchased any shares in the past two years. I'm looking for it to land in value territory again, and then I'll reinvest some of my dividends back into it. CNR is trading at about its five-year average dividend yield of 1.7%. Just recently, they had a huge 19.1% dividend raise. They continue to look like the better of CNR and CP. Next at $23 is our one closed-end investment fund we have, Canoe EIT Income Fund. It provides us with 3% of our yearly dividend income. My yield on book value is so high at 11.15% that I can bite the high cost of owning this income fund. I'm not an income investor, nor do I plan on it, as I'll continue to mention. I'll keep this on the back burner and use the monthly distributions to purchase other high conviction stocks I have in our portfolio. And if the time is right, I'll dump my shares. I know I sound like I'm on repeat, but nothing has really changed for me. After our first two paychecks, we're at $36.25. Our smallest utility, Fortis, paid us $72.11 in June. This gives it a weighting of 3.2% of our dividend income. Fortis has been a stable and steady grower over the years, with price growth and dividend growth both around the 6% mark. Right now, it is yielding 3.5%, which is in line with its 5-year average yield. At this price, I turned off drip and didn't accumulate more shares at a small discount. I'm hoping to be able to turn it back on for the next quarter. Now we broke the 100 mark at $108.36. Next, we were paid $94.71 in dividends from Manulife Financial Corporation. They provide us with about 4% of our annual dividend income. This is another staple in our financial heavy portfolio. They continue to grow their dividends at a rate of 9.6% over the past five years, with a massive 17.9% raise at the end of last year. The share price has been stagnant for years now, but this still doesn't bother me in the accumulation phase of investing. I look to continue to add to this position, as their PE is well below their historical average, as is their current dividend yield of 5.89%, well above their five-year average of 4.3%. That brings us to $203.07 for the month. The next paycheck was $109.27 from Great West Life Co. Inc. Enough to drip two shares in our iTrade account. GWO provides us with 4.6% of our yearly dividend income. It is trading well above their average five-year yield of 5%, which could indicate it is undervalued right now. At 6% yield with a PE ratio in the low nines, a growing income stream, I can't help but keep dripping shares at these prices, even though this is a portfolio redundancy. Plus, last year's 11.9% dividend raise that kept its payout ratio in line with its policy means I expect another 5% or more raise this year. After five paychecks, we're at $312.34. Our next dividend received was $38.22 from a monthly payer. 
Pembina Pipeline Corp. It pays us 5% of our yearly dividend income as one of our three in the energy sector. This stock is trading near its five-year average yield of 5.7%. The energy sector has been hurting after reaching all-time highs at the start of June. I think the oil super cycle may have come to its end, and that means everything in the sector should continue a downward trajectory. My yield on book value is low enough that I'll continue to take the dividends and reinvest them elsewhere until I feel they are of good enough value to start reinvesting back into PPL. So at the halfway point, we are at $350.56. Next, we were paid $43.79 in distributions from Smart Centers Real Estate Investment Trust. They provide us with 5.8% of our annual dividend income as one of the two companies in the real estate sector. This is a staple in our turf portfolio with its monthly distributions. I gladly hold this in our TFSA since we don't have to worry about the tax headaches of holding REITs in our taxable account. They are trading above their 5-year average yield, meaning it could be good value right now. It is about on par with my yield on cost. They haven't raised dividends for a while, and I don't expect them to either. I'll continue using their monthly distributions to reinvest in smart centers at this valuation, as they have returned me about 10% over the years. This brings our total to $394.35. Our next pay was $140.61 from Fiera Capital Corp. They provide us with 6.1% of our yearly dividend income. FSZ is currently trading far below its average yield of 7% over the last five years. Last year, there was a tiny 2.4% dividend raise. This is a high risk holding for us now with a payout ratio hovering near 100%. I wanted to accumulate more during the crash, but now I'm happy I held off as I'm losing confidence FSZ will be able to continue to grow its income in these market conditions. I'm marketing them very carefully and deploying the cash into other, better valued stocks. After 8 paychecks, we are at $534.96. Last month we were paid by TRP, our biggest energy holding. This month, it's Enbridge's turn. They provided us with $141.04 in dividends and represent 6.1% of our annual dividend income. With the energy sector getting pummeled since the beginning of June, ENB is now trading at around its 5-year average yield of 6.3%. They also had a low dividend increase of 3% this year. The nature of the pipeline business means it has less fluctuation than the energy producers. This has some pros and cons, of course. I'll be using their dividend to add to other better-valued positions unless this drops another 15% this quarter. After this big dividend payment, we hit $676. And now, for our largest holding, RioCan Real Estate Investment Trust. They paid us a distribution of $64.27 across three accounts. This company provides us with 8.4% of our yearly dividend income, which is a little rich. It has a five-year average dividend yield of 6.16%, which is drastically higher than the current yield of 5.1%. This is mainly due to RioCan slashing the dividend by 33% back in 2021. When the dividend is back to 2020 levels, hopefully by 2024, possibly 2025, this will provide a yield of 7.2% at current price, indicating it is undervalued right now. They already increased dividends 6.3% this year, or half a cent. With the uncertainty of interest rates, the global supply chain issues, and the possible pending recession, REITs have pulled back with the overall market. I'll keep dripping this all I can at this great valuation, 25% below NAV of $25. Now we're rolling at $740.27. Lastly, we have our monthly financial payer, First National Financial. We receive $65.21. They provide us with 8.5% of our annual dividend income without their special dividend. This stock has tanked since mid-2021 and continues to drop with the overall market. They currently provide a 6.74% yield. With a 5-year average yield of 5.6%, this is technically undervalued. After their most recent decline, I am comfortable adding to this position again despite the general sentiment about the real estate market in Canada. I like to accumulate fundamentally strong companies when they're out of favor. It has also paid out 5 consecutive special dividends in December or November. I hope they do so this year, yet again, albeit a smaller one. 
This brings us to a total of $805.48. But wait a second, we also had a payout of $8.10 by Quebecer. We used to hold this as a third telecom. We dumped it after what I thought was not a stellar forecast for the future. Then of course, they may acquire freedom, go figure. So our grand total is $813.58. My top three dividend pairs accounted for $390.92 or 48% of the $813.58 of dividend income for the month of June. As we grow the portfolio, this should moderate down to about 35%. I never want to be too dependent on any one company to help my portfolio grow in the event of a dividend cut. As you can see from the breakdown, no one industry or company dominates our dividend income. Now a huge part of our dividend income growth are the dividend raises. This month, not one company raised their dividends. Without any raises, we added $0 to our forward annual dividend income. Boo! So far this year, we have received $4,314.97 in dividends with a yield on cost of 6.55%. Our forward dividend income is $9,229 and growing fast. We expect our dividend income to continue to snowball as we drip and stay completely invested, putting those dividends to work for us. I think of my dividends as my little minions that work hard for me when I can't. With our minions working hard for us, we can forecast where we will be in about 10 years. I hope to outpace this forecast as the TFSA contribution room grows in the future. Next month has historically been one of our biggest dividend months, so hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the update. And please help YouTube inflation by smashing that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Mr. Financial.